All right, so this is a pretty nice, simple solution for coloring. It has a stroke around it, which is the white, which helps it show up on dark backgrounds. It has a drop shadow behind it, which helps it show up on light backgrounds. It has a gradient overlay on it, which helps move the eye towards the dynamic hard angles that are angrier. And it's got a color overlay, which gives it that nice glue cast. So if this is kind of sophisticated and this is my finished product, how do I save this? Well, I turn off my background and I save that as not my black logo project, but my color logo project as a PSD file. Save. And then file save as a PNG because I have the background turned off and I want it to be a free floating sticker. Okay. And then I'm done but I want to show you some of the other things. I have that PNG here. I have the black cutout PNG here. And you can see that they're very clearly the same logo. And the color just supports it, just makes it a little bit more dynamic. But a good logo is clear, simple, and versatile. And this one uses that dynamic thing. Now, because the color is making it more complicated, why don't I even try making it a little bit more complicated? The thing I don't like about vector imaging, though in logos you expect it, is they look so computer generated. So one way to mess with that is to texture it. And to do that, we can turn on bevel and emboss. And what bevel and emboss does is very subtle, but it puts a little indent based on your lighting, the lighting you set with your drop shadow. And then you can play with that more and more with these two different features. So texture is actually a really nice feature within Photoshop, which takes your smart vector, and it works best with vector files because otherwise it would mess up your edge if it was a pixel-based image. And you can put a subtle texture on it, like it's printed on with plasticine inks on a t-shirt or onto a helmet or you know how most logos are actually used from a distance you can't even notice but it does break it up nicely so it just doesn't look so um, artificial and you can play with the scale you know and the depth of the texture so you can make it more and more noticeable should you want to now that's a little bit too noticeable for me I'm going to take that scale down quite a bit so it's just a little grainy. Play with the depth a little bit. Now, do I like the, the embossing, the contour of it? I do. I have it at its thinnest. I can make it a lot stronger like that, but I think that's overpowering. But I like a little, a little uh, bevel and emboss with the white outline. That just helps it pop and be a little bit more readable. So that might be an update to it that I use along with the drop shadow. And then we have other options. One that's often used is satin, which gives a soft glow and a gray in the middle, especially if you put it on overlay. That can add kind of a nice sheen, like a satin uh, ink coating. Uh, inner glow, I can add a different color. Just, I'm not going to actually use this, but just so you can see it. This kind of pink, like glowing in from the edges. And you can set a blending mode on any one of them. So if I do something like screen, it will make it pretty obvious where those pinks are. If I needed to introduce another color just to be complicated, I could do something like a, a green, a sea foamy color, maybe a turquoise. I have it as a gradient now. Let's go turquoise to blue. Yeah. And that just breaks it up even more. And we tend to overdo these things, right? So I have it in screen mode, but I can try color dodge. But then it leaves kind of a gap in the middle. So let's try soft light, some of my favorites. See if that actually makes a difference at all. Yeah, a little bit. Just widens out the color. It's very subtle. With the satin, 
Yeah, why not? Just a little bit. And I can do the same thing with an inner shadow. I can, I'll do it with red so you can see it. I can control the coloring of that top lighting. If I want to. There's so many options. Like blood in the water. And then ones I never use. Like pattern overlay. It's on the bottom. So I'd have to turn off others to see it. But you can pick a pattern and you can create your own and kind of run it through your image. Right? That's just a linear pattern, but I could also choose, I can make my own patterns. I could choose a, um, a more sand pattern, you know, to make it look like fabric. On and on and on. But all these overlays, you have to decide what um, what opacity is actually affecting it. Yeah, I mean, maybe I'll take my gradient overlay just down a little bit and show a little bit of that texture pattern. Very subtle. Uh, I don't want the inner shadow, though. Though it does look angry. And if I take its opacity down, make it really subtle, and spread it out a little bit more. actually don't hate that. I've got yellow in there, I've got blue in there, now I've got red in there. All these things to play with. But it can be overwhelming really soon. So I'm going to take that down really far, only to about 8 opacity. Okay, and then outer glow. <laughs> outer glow is just like a drop shadow. And you can use it like a drop shadow, but generally it's used to lighten. So let's say I wanted the whole thing to glow. I could pick a color. God, it's an ugly color. And then I can spread it out. I can soften it. But it would be kind of fighting with my... Actually, yeah, let's do the complement. Let's do kind of a, an orangey yellow to complement the blue. It's going to fight with my drop shadow a little bit. But maybe again, really subtle. So this will be my challenge. Let's turn on every single blending option and make a choice for it that I think improves my logo. Now, does it look better on black? Yeah, just the drop shadow loses out and some of the glow effects. Does it look better on white? Yeah, I think that works. Right? Big difference from this. So once I'm happy with it, and it looks good on gray, once I'm happy with it, I turn off the background and I say file, save as, make sure it's a PNG. Since I'm, I'm doing two colors just to show you kind of overdoing it, I'll, I'll number that as color number one. All right, now I'm going to put those up. That's just coloring within Photoshop. I'm going to put those up into photo bucket, those two color solutions. And you're welcome to do as many color solutions as you like, as long as they're all distinct. So here they are. From a distance, they look identical. And remember, a good, Lego, a good logo needs to be scalable, look good large and small. And because they come from vector smart objects, these are not large files. They should, even at high resolution, they should come in pretty fast. So let me label these correctly so they show up in the right order. So this is my one with all the, all the stops pulled. Way overdone. So that's going to be number four. And then this one's going to be number three. All right. So that's as much as I need you to do for this logo project. It's very good to put an offset in. If you want to clean up your sketch within PhotoBucket, you can use their editing tool, which makes a copy of it for you. It's a little slower than Photoshop, but for something as simple as just cropping it, 
that should work pretty well. And just to remind you some of the organization, um, when you have a duplicate, so now this is my new SP18 Carl one. And so I have a duplicate now. I can move it to the trash. I don't need this one anymore. Just drag and drop it to that trash bin. So now we see all the steps needed. Okay, so here is the difference. What if I wanted the person to be a totally different color than the wave, like in this example? So last semester, or last spring, for Earth Day, we did something with oil company logos, right? And this is what you can kind of do in Photoshop, but it treats the whole vector cutout the same way. But what if you want individual things colored differently? Then you have to go back to Illustrator. And then in Illustrator, what you can do is you can control the color of each path. So let's say I want all of these. I'll hold down Shift and Command and select these different wave paths. I want all of those to be a certain color. So the first thing I need to do is make sure that I'm in a mode that can color them. And to do that, because I, I outputted these a lot, like a lot of you did, with live tracing as a black and white logo, this is something Illustrator does to save processing. It's a processing heavy program. It then takes all color options away because it thinks you're making a black and white logo. So if I want to change my black and white lo logo to a color logo, I have to make sure everything's unlocked. I have to select it all hit edit copy and then say file new in Illustrator. Make a new file. This is going to be Carl assignment six color vector logo. Something like that. Always put your name in it. I want it to be a print file and I want it to be letter sized because that allows for color. But even so, now I have a new layer. I'm going to say edit, paste in place. It will bring in everything. Now I can put it on the white artboard. Now notice I have color here when I never did before. And if I select these, I can pick a color, but it's on stroke right now. I don't know why it's on stroke. Let's turn stroke off. Let's pick the color for, for the fill. All right, so I can do a fill color. I can do a separate fill color for those than I would for this big shape. For that big shape, let's do a fill color. Let's do it stroke again. Oh, it's because I have it on the foreground there. That's why. Let's pick a different blue, right? Then for my guy and all his layers, I can separate him. Anything that's, you know, an individual cutout, I can choose a different fill color. And then my last one. I really don't. All right, so all that's okay. But I can also do the things I was doing in Photoshop. I can put a gradient over all of them. But there, it's a, it gets a little bit more complicated. So what I'm going to do is use my layers now, select everything, edit, copy it, lock it, turn it off, Make a new layer just for organization and say edit, paste in place. Because now.